Hi, Raps, Dean of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Wednesday. And we're now at the 27th of March, 2019, just around 4.10 in the afternoon. That's p.m. Central Daylight Time. Another down day in stocks and the markets were dragged today by the fact that we continue to see the curve yield invert even further. By the way, the German Bund, it was negative 0.33. Now it's 0.78. So it keeps getting worse there as the uh, it, what's going on in the euro is you're not getting any help from the central bank as they're really pushing back raising interest rates. The question for them is stimulus. And I don't know where they get that because they've shot so many bullets in their gun. Of course, President Draghi will say different of the European Central Bank. The dollar was uh, higher than this in the last trades of the day. We're down about 10 points from here in the last trades in the euro. When we come to the S&P, the market for the week is down a quarter of a point. So let's understand, while everybody's talking, this break and you get to the daily charts, for the week, the market isn't down very much at all. When we get over to the daily charts, we see that the first three days, and this is why this is where you're at, you had a big down day Monday, came back, now you're back down. That, that's about all that's really going on. But when you look at the swing line, you get a little different story because you have lower highs and a lower low. The problem with this pattern are these two days, right? Literally, this day where you had an outside day up and then you took out that low. Yes, you dropped a little more and then you come back like you're doing right now. Where do you think the battleground for the market is? I contend it's the 18-day average of closes, which is what I call that line in the sand so often. And if the market breaks, the next support level is a combination. I want you to use that word combination of the 200-day moving average of closes at 27, let's call it 27.69.75. And if that gives ground, then 27.52 at the lower Bollinger Band. Now, the fact that today's break did not take out 27.89.50 could give the bulls back some control if they take out Tuesday's high, and that high was right here at 28.35 without first taking 27.89.50 out. Why? Well, that would change the swing line to higher lows, higher highs over the 18-day average of closes, putting back in the play the upper Bollinger Band. Obviously, the trick is, does the market get there or not? And what the market has been doing is momentum in the market is still working off the overbought condition. You see this reading over 70 that's still left? Any readings of either the K or the D line, and the difference between the red and the blue, the K and the D, is that the same formula is using three days worth of data and then five days worth of data. That's the whole difference. So the lines crisscross. It's like moving averages. They'll crisscross each other. Well, until they get under both of them 70, you're overbought. So what I have here is a market that's fighting a battle. At least, I wish I could say that I'm in love because of this pattern where you had this higher high, even though the swing line's down, I'm not exactly certain that it is. I feel more confident in the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, if you'll recall, you lost the embedded reading right through here. And from that point, I'm looking for price in the 18-day average to come together. You had a brief rally, and then you dropped. Now, today's low, if you take a look, was 72.76. The 18-day average, 72.81, and from there you rallied back 50 points. So the downside target has been hit. Now the question is, what is this market going to do? If we take a look at the low on Monday, 72.90 was the low. Today's break was lower than that, so unlike the S&P, this market, even if it shoots over this high, is not in an uptrend. You'd have a lower low and a higher high. You're still working off what? The overbought condition here, so I don't see anything of interest on that market. In the Dow, you have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, caught very much in the sideways action of the Bollinger Bands. Notice where today you went down to is low. You went down to 25,441. The Bollinger Band, 25,437. So that area is what ended up supporting the market. And what do you think the resistance point became? The 18-day average. Now, if this market gets over 
the highs of yesterday, 25,822, the market can surprise you with a rally. And if that happens, could the rally carry back to the Bollinger Band of 26032 or whatever the number is coming in tomorrow? That'll be what you look at. Who's in control of the markets right now? The bears. I'm going to give them the benefit of controlling it. The key, are, the key to me is not to let uh, the market go back if you're a bear over Tuesday's high. In the Russell, you've come down, hit key support at the Bollinger Band 100-day average. Today, you were checking that support out. I think the, the pros have been taking money off the table here. And if you take out Tuesday's high, you could actually end up with higher lows, higher high into the 18-day uh, average, close over the 18-day average. And just like that, the market can go back into an uptrend. In the VIX, one of the things we were talking about is when the market goes to the upper Bollinger Band in this market, what I've been noticing is that the pros seem to be writing calls here, puts against the lower band, and I'm using the 18-day average as the number that I see them coming out of. Look at today. Today's low in the market, 1451. The 18-day average, 1458. You hit it, and I think that those people got out and take a look, market back up from there about a half a point. They were offering this the support in the market. In the slow stochastic of bonds, until you lose this embedded reading, this is called running and pushing out of a sideways action. That's what this market has now done. It has taken this and you're driving it out. Now, I, I've heard the different Fed chair, Mr. Kaplan, I was reading what he said, and he said, nah, you gotta wait and see the duration of how the inversion yields work and so on. I understand that. And typically you have a year to year and a half before this signal that we just had turns in fact into a recession. I'm, I'm, I realize that a lot of people will say, you know, just because you inverted, you did it just for a short period of time, it doesn't mean anything. I'm hearing that argument too. Do I buy into it? That's a whole different question. In the 10-year notes, as long as I have the embedded reading on pullbacks, I think the pros are buying this market. So as far as I'm concerned, this market is still very much running the Bollinger Band, as I call it, a day over, a day under, not staying consecutive in any manner, and that's what I'd expect. TLT put itself back into the uptrend now. Higher lows, higher highs, running the Bollinger Band with an embedded reading. The June dollar index, similar to the stock indices, you see this craziness right here. As much as I'm saying higher lows, higher highs, I've got my questions. I need to get away from this in order to know what's going on. What I will say is that support's probably at 96.20, get under 95.89 and a half, and you go back to a pattern of a higher high and a lower low, which would clean that up to a degree. My bigger question is the uptrend. So I'll use momentum, and momentum is saying up. I will give the benefit of the doubt to the swing line here. I, it's just whenever I've seen these patterns, I've always questioned them since I created the study breaking through the low and still having the swing line there and support at the 18-day average. The euro's a different picture. You don't have that craziness. Now you've got lower highs, lower lows. The market is not oversold. You still have readings in the 30s and 40s. So if it wants to extend, the question is, can it extend enough to get to the lower Bollinger Band? Taking out this number will be the problem for the market right through there. So I see between that number and the Bollinger Band where support might come in. In the British pound, Miss May today made a confusing statement to me. I'm sure everybody's got a different take, but she said that if they passed her deal, she would walk it to Brexit and resign. Okay, she's got a problem. The House Speaker said that deal, I'm talking the House of Commons, is not coming in the same form that it was. He won't let it on the floor. I'm not exactly sure what that means then with her resignation offer. We'll see. The market didn't blink, so she said that, and the market finished higher. Does that mean they don't like her? Well, when she said it, I swear the market was up, down, four points, five points. It didn't matter to the market. In the Japanese yen, 
as you can imagine, when you got to the Bollinger Band, I said on the pullback, you might find the 100-day average acting as the support, and that's pretty much what's going on right here. The market has worked itself out of being overbought. Both numbers are now back under the uh, 70 level. See that? And they've been staying that way for a few days. Here they, one wasn't, then it got under, and it's been just hanging in there. The trend is still up. Uh, the market, you know, finding support there. Resistance, I'm going to say, is 91.51. Deeper support comes in at 90.65. You don't end the uptrend on this pattern unless you get under 90.13 and a half. In Bitcoin, you've gone from the upper Bollinger Band back to that line in the sand and coming back up. And now the question is, what do you have? You don't have anything in terms of a trend. You got a higher high, lower low. Momentum is so-so. Eh, Bias is up. Don't know what to do there. In Brent versus WTI crude, a bit of a correction in the spread today. Yesterday, if you take a look, you were down to 733. You added back 30 cents to it today. I'll still call the bias of it down. When I come over to Brent itself, you can see that the marketplace is overbought. And where is it battling? Right here at that 18-day average in sideways action. We'll have to see what the market wants to do. As I told you, there'll be a meeting, I think they've now said, end of April, beginning of May, for OPEC and its allies talking about what the market's going to do. I think it's May, but I'm not certain. In the WTI, the market's got lower highs and a lower low. So that's a downtrend. It's completely countered until you lose the embedded reading. Got it? So this rules over that, meaning that there's still, I think, going to be willing buyers in the market until the red, the K line as it's called, gets and closes under 80. In rebob gasoline, be careful tonight. When you reopen, you may lose this reading. The market had a reasonable size range down a lot today, 1.72%. Uh, and that means that if it loses the reading, the 184.46 level, the 18-day average, gets probably hit. And if it gets hit, I think it's just a restart of the market because you got a higher high and lower and low. It does not start a downtrend. All it would call for is getting to the 18-day average. Could the market go lower? Of course it could. And we haven't had a reasonable correction literally since this whole run began. And if you go back to December, you see the real low of the market. In that gas, warmer weather is on the way and what I told you about. You get into that funny mix as winter ends spring begins and the demand for the natural gas falls off and as that's happening you're seeing this market slip with it resistance back here at the 100 day average very oversold market i think the pros are taking money off the table here and going to the sideline you know one of the things during the day when i'm looking at entry points that i look at and I, i've used this years are pivot points. And if you don't know how to use them, I created a series of videos. I think it's three of them that make this up, where I first teach you how to apply and what the formula for is this. You don't have to do it. Any good charting service is going to have this. It's a popular study. But I teach you how they work. I, the second video, how to apply them on your charts because you can put different amounts of pivot points on. And the third is how to use momentum with them. So if you'd like to get this, just go to our website, www.irapstein.com. You'll be able to have our free offers. Click on it and away you go. You can call my staff. They'll be happy to get this out to you. We'll send you the links and everything you need. I'm Irapstein. You have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.